decided to move into our home, I was worried about what other people would think. Probably for the first six months after having made this decision, I didn't tell my family because we were worried about it. It's just not what people do. They don't live in 320 square foot homes. We live here, myself, my son, and my husband. And we work right next door in our little workshop. We started out with a 2,000 square foot home. It was a little bit bigger than that. You lose track after a while. <laughs> It was just really too much for us to keep up with running a business. We weren't spending enough time with our son. And then it just as the economy got worse, it just got harder and harder to do. And we just really didn't want to struggle anymore. And so we decided to downsize. You walk immediately into the living room and kitchen area, or dining area. We have tall ceilings. It helps contribute to the spacious feeling of our tiny home. We knew we needed to make a change. I had been a fan of those small shotgun homes in Mississippi for ages, and so I really wanted to do something like this. We looked at trailers, um, mobile homes, but to be honest, those are fifteen, sixty thousand dollars as well. We did not want to spend that kind of money on housing. We also thought of living in these in a shed. We thought of living in a shed. <laughs> So my husband was browsing Craigslist one day and he came across the builder, the gentleman who built our home for us. We were able to build a custom unit for less than $20,000. It's very affordable. We live in a home that is paid off. We have no mortgage. We chose our appliances at full size. And we're a family so we do need full size appliances. Couldn't cheat on that area. A lot of times when people are talking about tiny homes, they talk about what we don't have. You don't have a dishwasher, you don't have a guest room, you don't have this or that. Well, just so you know, this converts into a guest bed, a full-size guest bed. I've got a full set of beautiful china. So again, I'm not focusing on what I don't have. I've got everything I need right here. And as far as the size of the building, I basically looked at what we needed. This is the hallway, and it's also the bathroom area. Shower. You can guess what that stall is down there. We really only need a place to eat because we only spend time in the kitchen. Even when we have guests, we're at the kitchen table. And then we needed a place to sleep. We need a place to homeschool our child. And after that, we were able to just design our home around our needs. That's my child's room. In the summer, we plan on raising his roof. Right now, it's just a loft. It is from this vantage point that Max surveys his kingdom. So... <laughs> this is my room. That's where I keep all my toys. There are weeks when he'll spend two or three days in a row up there playing with his toys or his Legos, I should say. <laughs> He's going to be an architect, building small homes. <laughs> Have you had friends up here before? Yes. How many? What's the most? The most I've had at once was six. And what I've did... had three, including me, stay up here for the night. <laughs> Do you think other kids might enjoy having a room like this? Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and once again, we return to the room with the view. And now let's take a tour of our bedroom. Again, we have tall ceilings. Helps it feel less cramped. And it's not cramped, I have to say. <laughs> the key to living in a small space is to just not have a lot of stuff. We had actually lived in smaller homes before. When we, we lived in South America for almost nine years. When, when we came back, my husband and I had two suitcases each. On the left, we have our dresser. My child is the bottom drawer. The middle one's mine. Then the top one is my husband. And the very top is our sock drawer. We were out of the country for almost nine years. And when we got back, one of the things that struck me was how big houses had gotten and how much stuff people had accumulated. 
This is our walk-in closet and I have way too many clothes. As we went along over the years, we started doing the same thing as everyone else. We started accumulating more and more stuff. It was so cheap. It was from China. It was just really easy to get. Finally, we just looked at our goals and we decided to change things. We wanted to go back to the way we were. The house is a little less than 10 feet across. Just getting from one end of the house to the other, you really can't move about without touching someone. There's something about the, the close physical contact. When you're walking through each room, you, you actually brush each other and you, you're constantly in each other's faces and it forces you to interact and even be more pleasant. We say thank you, excuse me, or could you scoot over please, thank you. How many people are we having? We are not sure how many people are coming over. There could be two or there could be ten. So we're making lasagna and salad. A lot of people have asked what about company? Where do you put your company? So we're just about ready for our company. Looks like it's going to be a very small group. We have a couple um, that can stay right here, two people here. I have spare mattresses everywhere because I'm from a large family, the oldest of eight. So I've got spare mattresses in our storage unit next door. We've got them underneath the bed. We have uh, one in the sleeping loft. So theoretically we could have even more company than we've even had. This is our living room and now I'm going to show you how we turn our sofa into a guest suite. I went down to the big box store and I bought a piece of plywood and had them cut it in half. I used piano hinges to attach them together and bought cute little feet. Disguised all of my storage. That's where I keep my vacuum by the way and it's a big vacuum. And then I went and got a couple of these legs that have the, the screw-in part. You put the two legs in, and then we open it up. And we're ready for a mattress. I had two pieces of foam cut. You can special order this. They're four inches thick. When it's not being used as a bed, they're stacked on top of each other and we use it as a sofa. And here we have it. Our 320 square foot home can now sleep probably six people comfortably, eight to ten people uncomfortably. Our payments here are very low. We actually rent a space. We pay $145 for the lot that we're on. Now I'm taking you outside to see where we work. And it houses not just our house, but our business next door. So we have very low overhead for our business, which is just fabulous. We make baby gifts and accessories. This enables me to work from home and my husband to work from home. And we enjoy our life. It's quite pleasant. This is his corner of the world where he cuts for me. He cuts the fabric. And Bunny is ready to be shipped out. We make use of vertical storage, all our patterns and scissors and whatnot. This is for my ribbon. Again, more vertical space usage. Our pantry is right here. We need a lot of space, obviously, when you're a family. We have our coffee maker in the corner, our microwave all our food. There's more food down there in the bottom. It helps you not to waste food when you don't have a lot of space sometimes. I remember when I had a great big home I would often forget about something and find it a couple of months later. I don't think I would like to try the 100 square foot home that a lot of it's kind of curious at the moment but no I think 350 is good for us. And on this side, I have my broom closet. See? How about that? It's not what you don't have, it's what you do have. That's what you focus on. We 
just wanted a simple life and this helped contribute to that peaceful feeling. We're not always rushing to make payments on a gigantic home.